So this is part one of a lecture on viral diseases um, from April 1st, 2020. And this lecture focuses on several of the learning objectives, including describing the common features of airborne direct contact and zoonotic viral diseases. And so these learning objectives had quite a bit of reading associated with them in order for you to sort of search out the common features of these different types of viral diseases on your own, but also to illustrate the variety and the diversity of viral diseases, even um, ones that use the same mode of transmission. And so, for example, all of these airborne viral diseases, there are several features common to them, but they are more different than they are alike, both in symptoms, um, in types of virus, and then in terms of incubation period, length of disease, and I think appreciating and understanding those differences between these different types of viruses um, is important to understanding viral disease. And so some of the common features of airborne viral diseases or viruses transmitted through the air are that they cause acute or short-term infections. They're highly contagious and infective, and so once um, that virus, um, is, the host cells are exposed to that virus, the chance of catching this infection or becoming infected are relatively high. And airborne viral diseases are caused mainly by envelope viruses. Some examples of airborne viral diseases can be seen at the top of the slide. Um, one that we're all familiar with is COVID-19, which is caused by this SARS virus, um, the flu, which is caused by an influenza virus, and then, kind of surprisingly to me, the, these two pox viruses, chicken pox and smallpox, are both um, transmitted through the air in respiratory droplets. And it's a little bit kind of a weird thing because generally we associate chicken pox, which can be seen um, on this patient up here, and smallpox, which can be seen on this patient down here, with uh, rashes or skin disorders. Um, so in terms of chicken pox, it's sort of these blister-like pustules. Um, in terms of smallpox, it's these larger um, pus-filled rash. And these rashy diseases are not something that we would think of as typically airborne. All right. Some common features of the direct contact viral diseases or viral diseases that are caused by um, direct contact between one host and another are that um, these direct contact diseases tend to cause persistent or long-term infections um, that are usually latent or sort of hide within the host. Um, the infections can be very long-term um, and can also even sometimes last for the entirety of the host life. And as such, these diseases that are caused by um, direct contact of viruses tend to progress relatively slowly and be asymptomatic for a long time. <clears throat> One advantage to this slow disease progression and this persistent infection is that you can imagine that if you have to, as a virus, be transmitted by direct contact from one host to the next, your rate of transmission is probably pretty low. And so by staying infective inside the host for a long time and allowing that host to live but remain infected, you increase your chances as a virus of being passed on to a new host. And some of the examples of direct contact viral diseases that you're probably familiar with are AIDS, genital warts, herpes, and mononucleosis. And you can see the viruses that cause these respective diseases listed here as well. Um, the warts in particular, you can see in this image on the right, um, and they're caused by the HPV or human papillomavirus. And as you note, all of these diseases, AIDS, genital warts, and herpes, um, either genital herpes or other types of herpes disease, um, are long-term persistent infections. So the last viral disease that we're going to discuss are the zoonotic viral diseases. Um, zoonotic just means that they are come from animals 
Um, and so a common feature of these viral diseases is that their reservoirs or the natural um, environment for these viruses is within an animal. Uh, <coughs> almost all zoonotic viral diseases are caused by RNA viruses. <clears throat> they tend to have very long incubation periods, so a long time between exposure to the virus and developing symptoms. Um, but once they do develop symptoms, the disease progression of zoonotic viral diseases is relatively quick. And some examples of the zoonotic viral diseases are up here. So um, hemorrhagic fevers caused by viruses like the Ebola virus, as well as rabies, are two examples of zoonotic viral diseases. And um, Ebola in particular has a very quick disease progression once symptoms become to be start manifesting. And so you can see patients that are in more of a late stage of Ebola hemorrhagic fever here on the left. Um, and one of the hallmarks of um, the Ebola hemorrhagic fever is these sort of blood-filled pustules that form on the skin, as well as bleeding um, from multiple orifices, including your mouth, um, your ears, as well as your eyes. And so a zoonotic disease has a long incubation period, which means it has a long time before you show symptoms. And it's possible that these long incubation periods allow the virus to infect many, many host cells without being detected because once the disease progresses, it will kill the host too quickly for it to be passed on. <clears throat> 